Welcome everybody to another one in our series of Esther interviews. Today we have got Dan Knowles who is a business development consultant and a project manager and Dan's worked on quite a few projects in the Lancaster Morecambe uh, district. Uh, um, Lancaster on Ice project, uh, the Array Festival and he's currently working on Fraser House project. So I'm sure you're going to tell us more about those, Dan. So uh, f first question is, okay, what, what actually is it that you do? Um, well, what, what I like to do is I like to go and work for organisations and entrepreneurs when they have got uh, a big project or something that wants to, they want to deliver or want to do, maybe it's a business to get off the ground or, or something um, where they need somebody to come in who's kind of a uh, multifaceted skill base of business development, whether that be um, uh, looking at a digital strategy, whether that be through, to, through kind of traditional business development, sales, um, sponsorship, partnership building, um, and putting a strategy together to, to kind of to deliver a project and make sure it's kind of got the outcomes that people need, so sales, income, uh, new customer, marketing reach whatever that might be what's your project what do you need and i'll just go on and kind of deliver it and and that's it um, things that people kind of know me for is the fact that i've got quite a strong and large and, and highly engaged network um so i tend to kind of understand know a lot of people um um skills i think the, the big skill is opportunity spotting um um and an ability to kind of identify where where the money is, where the, where the opportunity to make the money is, and then to, to kind of go and do it. Um, so I think the, the opportunity spotting one is, is quite important because, you know, I often have this conversation with people now. We, we, live in this, we live in an environment where opportunities move and change very quickly. Um, and um, new opportunities come up, maybe it's because the technology's changed, people's attitudes to something has changed. Um, suddenly kind of, things spring up and you, you kind of think, you know, in a, in a kind of, in a common, in a, in a modern organization that needs to be quite fluid, you know, understanding where that kind of those opportunities may have shifted to is really important and be able to move quickly to sort of adapt and take advantage of that is, is, is really important, but it can be detrimental as well. But well, that's, that's, that's really interesting, Dan, because, I mean, I, I don't know if you're aware, there's a, was it, who, where's my cheese, I think it's called. There's a little, a little film on YouTube, um, and it's, a, it's, it's about, it, it, the analogy is you find a great big pile of cheese, you know, you're set up, but eventually all the cheese goes. But rather than go and look for where, where the next opportunity is, you stay with what's not working. Yeah. Uh, and, and you don't move on. And things are moving really quickly as well, aren't they? I mean, the, 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 the pace of change is just just seems to be well, accelerating. Funny, actually, this is probably, you know, you, I did a call last week where people were asking me about, you know, how are organisations moving through these, this, this, the current climate and the ones that are kind of tend to be looking like they're doing quite well are the ones that are sort of able to, uh, you know, this term that everyone's using is pivot, but, you know, spot new opportunities to see where, where you know, where the market is shifted to, what they can do to benefit from that, and um, and then quickly sort of put put a plan in place to to to, to succeed. To in that. I mean, yeah. I will just say for the benefit of our viewer um, that um, the, the ten weeks you're referring to, we're, we're still in at the tail end of uh, the Lock UK's down. version, England's the UK's version or England's version of the COVID crisis. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Um, that's thrown up. That's just thrown everything in the air, hasn't it? That's just taken the sticks and just chucked them in the air. Well, it, yeah, it has. It has, and you know, it's it, it is. It's in, and it's incredibly interesting. You know, you, you sort of look around, you look around Lancaster, and and sort of see. You know, uh, I, I've been talking to people a lot about like digital, like takeaways, for instance. Um, You've now got these platforms, uh, Morecambe Eats and Lancaster Eats, which are localized versions of what traditionally was uh, Just Eat and Deliveroo, you know, and so kind of making more local marketplaces, um, 
and they're benefiting from the fact that people uh, takeaways don't use don't like to use just eat because they take such a huge margin out of uh, your delivery and so there's an opportunity there to kind of develop a, um, a scaled down and much more cost efficient platform that can that can um, work commercially but not take as big a margin from the takeaway owner. Mm. Um, and I think I think with all the sort of the, the, the tools are there to do that now aren't they? <clears throat> I mean, well this is this is it you can fix up a solution in, in no time at all and, um, and, and we are going to have to move to more local resilient economies that bootstrap themselves and can to some extent at least stand on their own feet yeah there is a huge appetite to kind of to do this to to um you know to to invest in local to promote local um and to make sure that more and more funds are kept within a local economy as opposed to kind of us all going out next week and starting doing our shopping at asda again and um, tesco and mm -hmm. amazon and not that we want to, not that there's uh, anything wrong with Asda and Tesco in case. Uh, uh, yeah, abs you know, absolutely not. But, you know, the reality is that if well, we're spending money locally, we're keeping more However money. you look at it, places like that do not reinvest very much money in the local supply yeah. chain. Yeah. That's, that's just a fact, isn't it? So yeah. if, we, if, we, if we can get more of our res local resources reinvested in our local supply chain that's just going to be good for the whole community and that's not just our community if every community does that then they're all going to be they're all going to be better well, off collectively better off yeah i mean um, of course that that involves creation of local um uh asset bases uh that allow that to happen don't they i mean that can't really happen at the level of an individual business or or organization you have it's that next level of creating the infrastructure to support that that interests me and i think that's an area that you i think that's the area an area you operate in and are quite comfortable in so an example for me is is the fraser house project that you're working on so um just uh, what you know tell me a little bit more about that um so um i mean it's, uh, it's fascinating kind of backstory really very interesting um a couple of years ago um mike gibson who a lot of people know for his work in the digital community of lancaster and lancashire um wrote a report called nowhere to grow and what that did was highlight to um a number of stakeholders including the county council that one of the biggest restrictions on the growth of lancaster's digital economy uh, was the fact that there was a lack of suitable office space. Um, and it kind of identified the fact that the, the, uh, the, that lack particularly was um, at, you know, when companies got to about 50 staff and above, the city centre doesn't really have any accommodation that can, to, can, can house those businesses. But it also identified that at startup level, there was a lack of affordable um, office space for businesses that you know didn't have a great deal of capital to get going um, so that report then kind of circulated with a number of people and landed um, with economic development at Lancashire County Council and um, the County Council was aware that it had a property on White Cross that um, had recently been um, be become untenanted um it was uh, probably got a building called fraser house which is one of the old mill buildings uh, that had previously housed social services and so uh, the decision was made with a little bit of pressure from michael and one or two other people that the council would um would invest in in fraser house to create to, to start that story of a new kind of uh, wave of commercial property assets that support economic development. So um, Fraser House was identified and, and the County Council have committed to investing about £1.7 million pound to totally um, transfer that building into a digital and tech hub. Wow. So what, what that means is, is to give you kind of the context of the building, it's a three-storey property 
um, of about 10,000 square feet in total. Um, it's about 5,000 square feet on the ground floor and then two offices on floors one and two of two and a half thousand square feet. The ground floor, the 5,000 square feet, is that that's going to be a dedicated, if you will, co-working startup space. Um, floors one and two are going to be uh, are for two anchor tenants, uh, two companies that, can, that have got sort of a team of 40 plus that will move straight into those offices. The whole idea is that it is a, a digital and tech focus. So the businesses that we try to attract are <coughs> focuses, uh, focuses on businesses that are working in digital and tech sectors. Um, so, so, so it's kind of like our own very own uh, little community, Silicon Valley. It, it is the start of a community, Silicon Valley, yeah. Uh, for one of Lancaster. Them. I don't yeah. know what we'd call that, but uh, well, we don't have any Silicon uh -huh. here. No, but I'm, you know, I'm happy to kind of expand on that a little bit more as well. I, I kind of made myself aware to the county council who um, asked me if I would be interested in, in effectively representing the county council on the ground in Lancaster to start um, the conversations with potential tenants and to make sure that when it opens, um, in Fe we, we're supposed to open in November, it's now going to be for sort of February 21, um, when it opens, that there is a community of people ready to, of businesses right. ready to, yeah. So, 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 so you, you took the you took the initiative, did you? You, you approached the county council there. Well, I, I mean, I put it on LinkedIn that I was looking for a new project, and yeah. uh, I think the, um, I mean, it's, everyone kind of was aware of the work that I'd done around Lancaster and Ice, and it was obviously a, a very high-profile project. So, um, yeah, I think fortunately because of that, people had sort of one or two people thought maybe I'm, I might know what I'm doing. Right. So, uh, well, so, so, so you certainly knew what you were doing with Lancaster on Ice. I mean, yeah. by all accounts, that was very successful. It's just a massively successful uh, event, and uh, and I think it'll continue to grow. Um, and it's got a great kind of, it's got a great team around it doing that. You know, the, you won't find a better entrepreneur than Martin Horner, and um, you know, Hannah is uh, you know exceptional at the hospitality side and uh, Chris is an excellent event organiser so just to, to say what Lancaster and Ice is I mean it's it's basically a, an ice rink and, a, and last year it had a ferris wheel as well didn't it so yeah we had the Lancaster so, Eye plus yeah, the ice we, rink we, plus yeah. the, everything around that the the stalls and the, the entertainments that go around that yeah. mine had this uh, incredible idea to put an ice rink on on Dalton Square which we we did in, in 2018 and Effectively, my remit, uh, as it was presented to me, was was twofold. Um, we, Dan, we want you to make sure that people come, and we want you to make sure that we've got sponsorship that's going to help us to pay for it. Um, so, Not a biggie, you know, then. <laughs> no, you know, no pressure. Yeah. Um, um, simple. So, um, yeah. So that was kind of. So my role was effectively was was twofold to make sure that you know we had a, a, a robust partnership program um that was that was supported us to put the event on and um and yeah to make sure that, that we'd sold tickets by the the bucket load so um unfortunately we managed to kind of achieve both so um we had a a, a a big part of my role was kind of in the first instance with the sponsors was creating a, a kind of program of sponsorship with, with advertising with kind of um company benefits um uh, corporate corporate um hospitality sponsorship. yeah sponsorship corporate hospitality um and um it was you know a really successful package we had um, obviously a lot of re local businesses we had support from uh, united utilities as well mazuma mobile obviously the lancaster base the university um and then uh, companies like banks lions and um and a number of other sort of local retailers and um, James Booth, um, financial advice. And you've been working on another project recently, the Array Festival. Yeah. Um, so um, Array was, um, Array ties more into kind of what I've been doing in terms of the, the digital community. So part of the kind of role, the, the sort of, I suppose the way I'm kind of attacking the challenge of ensuring that we've got a community ready to move into Fraser House is to just generally create a digital and tech community in Lancaster. 
and, and to kind of almost to formalize that and <clears throat> to make it look like something um, specific. So as part of that, um, what I wanted to do was to, you know, for, for any sort of community, as you know, Michael, every, every community needs a signature event. And so the idea was to, to put on um, a, a digital and tech festival, which is now a common, you know, commonplace in a lot of cities across the, the UK. Um, and I kind of felt, well, if we can do this in Leeds and Manchester and Liverpool, then why can't we do it in Lancaster? So the whole premise of Array Festival was to create a, a digital and tech festival. But in the first instance, in the first year, not necessarily to kind of attract people to Lancaster from the outside, but actually just to get Lancastrians under, excuse me, understanding what is happening in Lancaster in digital, in tech, in innovation. So it was all designed around kind of bringing to the surface a lot of entrepreneurs, companies who are doing great things in the city region and uh, ensuring that, that we showcase it really well. So, and, and, that, and, that was, uh, and that was the whole premise behind it, which was... Um, and then because of COVID, it had to shift entirely online. Yeah, so, um, so the whole intention was um, we planned a, a week festival um, and I had support from uh, a small team of, of, uh, of local freelancers who, who were just incredible throughout. About a week before lockdown, we realised that it wasn't going to happen. So we made the conscious decision to, to, to decide not to do it. Um, offline, we would just shift everything online and have a virtual festival. And, um, and so that's exactly what we did. And in, it actually turned out to be a really, you know, really powerful thing. Um, I ran it throughout the whole of the month of May and had 25 different talks, um, <clears throat> a mixture of roundtable chats, insight talks, um, uh, entrepreneur kind of case studies, um, stories, and um, it was it was just fantastic. Um, we had some you know incredible speakers telling some some really wonderful stories, and more importantly, I think, and, and the the loveliest piece of feedback that I got um, was that. Um, it felt like it was a grass. It was a very grassroots mm. type um, of event. In so far as that really is a characteristic and feature of the sort of Lancaster Morecambe area, isn't there? There's a lot of pride of place and 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 and, and uh, commitment to this community from a lot of people. I think so, and I think and that, one of the things that I wanted to explore, and I think we did quite well, was I think when you think digital and tech in Lancaster, quite often. Um, a lot of the time, perhaps the same names crop up, the same companies crop up, or quite often it's about the university perhaps, and it's what's going on in digital tech with and at the university, which, I mean, are all incredibly important parts of our digital and tech community. But there are parts of our digital and tech community that, are, that have blossomed for years, um, but have done so under the radar and have not been involved with perhaps the university or, or other stakeholders or, or, on the, or on the radar of the councils and what have you. They just kind of get on and, and, and do their piece. And I think that's what this event, and it's certainly what I wanted to do, was to, to, to bring some of those people, some of those entrepreneurs, some of those businesses, a little bit more into the spotlight and say, well, it's wonderful what we're all doing over here, but these guys are doing this over here as well. And let's all talk about it and let's all kind of share that. And, and I think it works really well in that sense. Mm. I just realised that you probably one of your superpowers is that uh, you're able to uh, <laughs> identify. You've got this strong sense of, of of community involvement, and and exactly what you just said about being able to bring some of those things, some of those people, and some of those businesses, and some of those projects that are under the radar, but help to uh, keep build the fabric of this place. Um, to the attention of some of those bigger anchor institutions. I'm personally very aware of the fact that some people don't have a voice. Um, and so you need to, you know, when you, you know, when you're like me and you're confident and you can speak, I think you, you know, you've got to be aware of that. You've got to understand that part of the responsibility of being like that is giving other people the voice as well.
is allowing other people to tell their story. It's it's having the right people in the right places. It's having the right people in the right roles. So having people who are who are willing to get under the skin of the kind of you know who are willing to kind of reach out and have these conversations with people. Um, you know when it's when it comes to kind of community building, I think sometimes um, for a lot of people the idea of kind of going and speaking to someone new and saying, you come and do this, you know, we need you, you know, we need to celebrate you. Um, I don't know if it's a British thing or what, just feel a bit uncomfortable kind of going and telling someone how great they are. Um, whereas I, I don't know, I, I don't have that problem. I, I love telling people how great they are because, you know, it's, it's great to say, you know, and, and it's a really powerful thing, I think. I, and I go, I go back to something you mentioned there because Lancaster are nice. And one of the, probably the most important piece of feedback I ever got about Lancaster and Ice was from Ian Dewar, who is the chaplain at um, the hospital. The infirmary. At the infirmary. And we had a, a stakeholder, we invited um, stakeholders from the university, the county council, city council, marketing Lancashire, um, uh, the infirmary, a couple of other people, to a, um, a kind of, uh, a sort of summary meeting of 2018 Lancaster and Ice and a sort of positioning for 2019 Lancaster and Ice. And we were asking people their thoughts and feedback. And Ian said, the thing that I really loved about Lancaster and Ice <clears throat> is that whilst it was a, a, a commercial venture, it felt like it was owned by the community. <laughs> Bingo. That's um, what we're trying to create, isn't it? That's yeah. that's the magic. That's the goal. That's yeah. In a way, you just in a way for me, anyway, you've summed up a lot of people, and we'll still work, be working on this, but try to sort of put their finger on what is it that's special and magic about Lancaster and Morecambe because they're both amazing uh, in 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 slightly different ways, and and it's very difficult to put your finger on, but I think there's something in yeah. You know, doing things that make good business sense, but which are also make good community sense. Yeah. And they do both things at the same time. Yeah. Uh, exactly that. You know, Martin and Hannah themselves are, you know, are fantastic at that. You know, they've, you know, they're, you know, they've grown businesses that have employed a lot of Lancastrians. Um, they seek to um, use local supply chains where they can. Um, and, you know, I don't think they particularly caught the limelight of anything, uh, although certainly during the time that I work for them, we seem to be in the local press quite often. But, um, but they, you know... But if they, you will put on massive, great big ice festivals with well, giant that's wheels, the kind of thing, exactly. You will get people's but, attention. Exactly. But when it came to the, the ice rink, I suppose I was always ac acutely aware of the fact that if we wanted to make it work, and we want it to be kind of have magic and um, it, it needed the community to be involved. So one of the, for instance, part of that and one of the strongest points of it was the, the charities partnerships that we had. So we had three partnerships with St. John's Hospice, um, Morecambe Bay Food Bank and Unique Kids & Co. We were able to extract the magic of all three, you know, and really use it commercially to amplify the message of Lancaster and Ice, but also um, in a community sense, you know, we were able to do things like um, having the, this last year, having the giving tree, which um, people were invited to donate Christmas presents, which we then passed on to the food bank for, for children across the district. I mean, we were just, we had a, at one point, I think the cellar at the borough was just floor to ceiling high with Christmas presents um, you know we had these magical skate sessions for the children at Unique Kids & Co where we ring fenced a number of sessions where they could come down and use the ice rink with children with wheelchairs and um, physical disabilities could, could quietly access the ice at a time that suited them <clears throat> um, you know I think we raised about year one it was about eleven thousand pound for um st john's hospice twelve thousand pounds or something and and um and a, and a big amount again this year just gone so that that kind of 
that element of feeling like everyone was part of it was was really important. Well, that's really inspiring. I'm, I mean, I'm thinking because we're going to we're going to wrap up in a minute, okay. and I'm um, thinking that um, we're just coming out we're just coming out of the out of the COVID um, lockdown or grounding here in in the UK, and we in and we we're, we're not nothing's going to we're going to there's going to be a new normal, and there's a there's there's this uh, phrase that I really like is this build back better. There's a hell of a lot of work to do to create a more uh, functioning, um, pleasant world, local business world operating system, which which puts quality of life and well-being at its heart, isn't it? I, I personally think, um, and I would because I live here, that Lancaster Morecambe has got a bit of a head start on that because we've got so many amazing creative uh, well-meaning people uh, and we're very very lucky to have very receptive big organizations like the universities the city council you know the, uh, also uh, um, working with the community but but how do we move forward I know you've been doing a little bit of work on this you've been doing some soundings about how we move forward and if we come back to your your core skill set, you know, sort of project management. How do you, how do you, what do you see your role in, in, in the, uh, in, in that as we move forward? I suppose my position within the community that I work with as, as someone who has, I, I suppose, a little bit of influence and a strong network. Um, I think my role is to kind of, is, is, to, is to continue to kind of build those communities is to um, is to drive development through enthusiasm. Be really enthusiastic about kind of what the future looks like and can look like. Um, listen very closely to, to what it is the businesses are looking for. Um, certainly, you know, with Fraser House it is about the, the Fraser House community, the digital community is about creating a platform for those businesses to grow. So my role there is to ensure that they those businesses have got access to those things that they need in order to scale up and grow um but then alongside that is i think as a as a kind of passionate lancastrian is to make sure that everything that he's doing that so is done in the right way so this the Lanc the city council has released its digital strategy and that looks at um it looks at change it looks at um connection it looks at um it looks at kind of the the question marks around environmental sustainability. The city, the city council has acknowledged um, the climate emergency. So it's making sure that you know. I think I, I you know, you, you know, I'm like you. You hear me harp on a lot, plenty about this, Michael. But you know, making sure that people are ditching the cars, making sure that the public transport is fit for purpose. You know, making sure yes. that um, cycle tra cycle tracks are. Um, you know, are available and accessible and um, and useful. Um, and, you know, and making sure, the other thing that I'm really passionate about is um, skills development. So, you know, people will often hear me banging the drum about making sure there's opportunities for for every single child in the region, not just, not just those that are naturally by virtue of where they are um, are going to go on to university and have great careers, etc. But also those kids that you know are, uh, are not as kind of equipped with the um, social backgrounds that they need to, to realise those opportunities, but they're given the opportunities to 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 be to have plenty of digital skill and are able to kind of find careers in those growing sectors, um, and that everyone's kind of aware of that. So. Yeah, I was well. If I was going to summarise you, your your, your skill set in a in a nutshell, I would say that um, uh, you're you're a um, um, a change agent for helping to bring about smart development, rather than as as opposed to dumb development, which is oh. uh, what we could do if we don't put the effort in. Um, and and you you highlight there, for example, getting more cars off the road. Well, you know there are so many things that are going to change now. I mean, the way that people work, their home and office work relationship is going to radically change 
as people have discovered that you can, or businesses have discovered, you don't necessarily need to shell out for expensive real estate when you can decentralize. Uh, there might be opportunities there for local office hubs in, in neighborhoods rather than all in the city center. The, 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 in a way, the, the, it's a, well, I wouldn't say it's a blank canvas, but there are huge opportunities. And of course, that would have an impact on the number of cars on the roads um, quite dramatically. So the yeah, cycling I'm, I'm, has I'm, taken a, a massive upswing. I mean, um, you know, I mean, I, I, I look forward to working with you on some of these things as we move forward. Well, yeah, and you too, Michael. You know, it, this is I think this is a really important thing. You know, and you you've kind of been, you know, you 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 know, we've known each other for several years now, and you you know, I've always been really impressed with the job that um, that Esther does, and the job that you know, and by virtue of that, the job that you do in, in terms of leading on that conversation of sustainability and um, and environment, and and having that, that kind of conscious approach. So hopefully now, you know, equally that. Um, you'll be able to kind of um, take some of this forward and use your, those messages and people might be hopefully pricked up, their ears are pricked up a little bit more to listen to these conversations. That in your, current, your, your current focus, of course, is, is building the digital tech community in, in the Lancaster, Lancaster Morecambe area, isn't it? And, and, and putting, some, uh, putting some resources and some wings under that. So if anybody's interested in that, I mean, how do they contact you? Well, um, I would say, you know, the best way to always contact me is um, if you search Dan Knowles on LinkedIn, you'll, you'll find me straight away. Um, so connect in and send me a message. Um, you can, the, the Fraser House website is fraserhousehub.co.uk. Um, and if you want to leave details through the website, they'll, they'll get to me as well. And um, I'll drop you a line and tell you about the kind of community we're building there. And, and yeah, or, or finally, if you want to email me, you can email me dan at dannolls.co.uk. Brilliant. Well, thanks a lot, Dan. Thanks so much. Cheers. Thank See you. See you soon.